Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to learn about plugin architecture in Python. A couple of episodes ago we made the decision to rely on dynamic imports to load our scrapers, which basically meant that when we're writing our scrapers in the base package, that means they're going to be automatically available, we don't need to add any code anywhere, we just add a folder, main file, default function and everything works. In this video what we're going to do is once we have created a package and once we have installed the package, how do we go ahead, create a scraper and insert to it after we're already using the tool? So this means no code changes at the current repository, but rather extending the functionality of your application at runtime. My name is Anton, welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel. Please don't forget if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's take a look at this. So our current setup is we have the base scraping library, we have the scraping API and we have the scraping CLI, a command line and a web interface. In the scraping project over here we have our three scrapers and we currently run it through the run module where we resolve the scraper dynamically using import lib. Let's do the simplest possible thing of inserting a spider into our application after it has already been built. First of all, let's create a virtual environment, so virtual env venv. Then we're going to activate this virtual environment, so bin, activate. We'll make sure that we're going to pip install build. And then we're going to use Python module build. And we're going to first just start off with building the scraping CLI project. And I'm going to stop here. I want to make sure that I use the wheel flag. Once that has built, let's go ahead and install the wheel. And remember, we're doing this because we're trying to simulate building our package and then somebody using the package at production is going to extend it with their own spider. Now that we have installed it, if we take a look at the venv folder inside lib, we are going to see the scraping and scraping CLI folders. If we try to scrape blog and say we're scraping one blog, no problem. If we then scrape something like hello or test, Module test doesn't exist. In order for this to work, what we have to do is we have to create a new folder. For example, test, we will then add a new file, something like init py, so mark this as a module. And then we're going to add another file, main py. Here we're going to define a default function. This is going to have some kind of arguments and then this is going to print hello world. If we now run test, hello world will get printed to the console. What we've done now manually, we essentially want to do at runtime. In order to be able to do this, we are going to focus on just uploading a single main.py or a single scraper. We will generate a folder in here and then we will also generate the init.py. We're going to delete test and we're going to start afresh. Let's collapse the venv, scraping CLI, scraping API. And inside scraping, we're going to create a new file and this is going to be an importer. The importer is going to be able to add a scraper. The scraper will have a name and it is going to have some kind of contents. So the contents are going to refer to the contents of the file. So if we are uploading it from a web API, it's going to be whatever is passed to the web API. If we're uploading from the command line, it is going to be a file path. So the command line will need to do a little conversion before it is passing the contents over here. We will need to create folders and all that stuff. So let's import a couple of packages. First of all, OS and then path lib. OS we're going to use to go to path and then real path and here we're going to supply file and this is going to give us and we can actually see if we just comment out this function put this over here and put this in the print we're then going to change directory to scraping and then scraping again here we're going to be able to see the importer pi we're going to run python 3 importer pi and this is the output this is going to print the directory of the current file so wherever the package is going to be used we are going to get the following directory so the importer is going to be sitting somewhere here we now want to get rid of this slash importer to get the current directory the way that you can do this is you can go to s path and then dir name open parentheses again if we rerun this now we have the folder. The path lib that we have imported here is to ensure that whatever directory that we're going to be creating is going to be created. So let's go ahead and uncomment add scraper. 
we're going to grab the path that we're obtaining over here. And this is going to be current dir, so current directory. We want to be able to generate a spider directory, which is just going to be the current directory plus the path, the name of the spider. Inside pathlib, we're going to import path and then we're going to pass a spider directory into this. On path, we will call the function make dir and for the parameter, we have to pass parents true and exist OK, true as well. This is going to ensure that the spider directory is going to exist. We can then further take path, path, spider dir. Please note that the name is not going to have the slash. We're going to use this to append one more slash in it and then another double underscore and pi. This is going to help us create a file which is going to identify this directory as a Python package. On here, there is a touch function, which is just going to create the file and it is going to be empty. Finally, we're going to use the standard with open spider dir plus another one of these, which is just going to be main.py. We're going to give it a right flag as F. So just a reference to the file will be F. We're going to write whatever contents we have here. And I think this is pretty much it for the importer. Let's collapse the venv. We are going to go into scraping CLI into main and we're going to create another function. So import scraper. We're going to be using sysargv. So the first will be the scraper name and then the second one will be scraper path. And here we can attach scraper. We're then also going to import importer. We're going to be using the importer to add spider, I think it was, or add scraper. We're going to supply the scraper name and with open function, we're going to put scraper path. This is just going to be a read path. So as F, we're going to get scraper contents equals F read. So read the whole file and then scraper contents, supply that to the importer at scraper. So when we're using the CLI tool, we're going to supply the scraper name and then the path to a file. The scraper tool is going to read the file and then it's going to pass it along to the importer and the importer is going to create the appropriate spider in the appropriate location. Let's test this out. So I'm just going to press the up arrow key in order to scroll through the commands. And first of all, I will rebuild the scraping CLI. I'm in the wrong directory, so I will need to back out a couple of times. Again, rebuild, reinstall the wheel. Please note, if you just reinstall, nothing is going to happen. You're going to get this warning on the end that the tool is already installed. You want to be using the force reinstall flag. And I'm noticing this might be a little bit too small, although that is a little bit too big for me to, <laughs> to write anything. So anyway, dash dash force reinstall. Let's add that and this should force reinstall the tool. Let's go ahead and write some kind of hello world.py. Inside of hello world, let's create a default function, pass some args, and all it's going to do is print hello world and perhaps return an array that just contains hello world again. So I don't want to type it out, I'll just copy pasta. One thing I just realized, we have written the import scraper. However, in setup.py, we only expose the scrape command line tool. So we want to copy this and then we want to go and grab the import scraper command, expose it here and scrape dash import. Again, I will have to go through the reinstallation process. So first of all, build the wheel and then force install the package. Now I should have a scrape import. Cool. So I get an index out of range exception, which is basically just means I don't have enough parameters in argv and this is okay. So I want to import this scraper under name hello. And this is just going to be a hello world scraper. Looks like the import has been successful. Let's go ahead and check it out inside the venv. So I'm looking for the scraping folder. And here is now the hello folder with the main.py with the following contents. Cool. And by the way, I know this has just navigated automatically, but the importer is here as well with all the relevant logic. Let's go ahead and try scrape hello. And there we have it, our dynamically imported scraper through the command line. Now let's go to pip, uninstall and then scraping star. I'll uninstall this. I'll clear the console. We're going to collapse venv 
and we're going to be making sure that we're working with scraping API. If we go here and let's just close everything. And instead of everything, I should have actually just went to main pi first, grab this logic over here for import scraper. We're then going to go into api.py and place this over here. We can then take up route, place it over here. We can replace scrape with import. So import scraper, we can still supply a scraper over here. And for file imports, we can actually go to the internet because I don't work with Flask all that much. You can just type in Flask, find your previous documentation or just Google for it. Welcome to Flask, find something like this. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Here you can search for file and you will find maybe something like static files, which is not what we're looking for. Configuring from Python files, not quite. And then you may have something like uploading files. You will open this up and then the configuration here for now, we can ignore it. If we go a little bit more down, we will see that we're capable of defining for the endpoint to either be a get or a post. We want to make this one a post because it is very hard to supply a body from HTTP clients. Generally, you just want this to be a post. So method post, let's come back. If the request method is post, we want to do the following, which is just reading a file entry from files. So let's do something similar. For the sake of the example, I am going to avoid all validation. I will assume the scraper contents are just going to be present. If we try to use the file, we can see that we don't get really any IntelliSense and the way that it is being used in the documentation is they're trying to save it to a path. Now, we don't really want to save it to a path. We want to upload a file or we can either attach the contents to the post request, which might actually be a little bit easier, but let's go ahead and figure this out because perhaps you are going to be uploading spiders, which are going to be consisting of multiple modules, which is basically a zip. Then you're going to need to unzip, take the files, move them, etc. So the importer may look a little bit more complex in the final application, but for now, just as long as the idea is getting across. In order to be able to play around with the file, we're going to pip install flask and then we're going to remove it after. Now that we installed flask, we have IntelliSense and this should light up appropriately. On the file, we can see what kind of methods do we have. We have things like close, file name, headers, save, so save to a file, which we don't want to do, or stream. So a stream is a stream of bytes. So whatever contents the file may have, stream tells me that is where it is. And on here, we should be able to find something that looks like read. Let's go ahead and try to print this scraper name. We can cut it, put it as the parameter and then as the route parameter as well, remove it from here. Scraper path. We don't need it because we're no longer reading it. We're going to comment out the importer and the scraper contents. Maybe we will assign it from the stream in just a second. So from here, let's actually also add the importer from the command line. We're going to do pip install dash E scraping API. So just really quickly scrape API so we can test the interaction here. We can see that we cannot find scraping. So we have to do pip install dash E also bring in the scraping module or the scraping library and now launch the scrape API. Here we're going to have the API and I'm going to launch Insomnia. Here is Insomnia open. It looks slightly different. Let's create a request collection. My collection. Sure. We're going to create an HTTP request. It is going to be a post. Let's make sure we copy the URL and then we are going to go to import scraper name. So I've copied the route. Let's place it here. No double slashes Let me make sure that this is slightly bigger. And this is going to be my test scrape. Why not? In the body, we will say that we want a binary file and then we will select a file from my scraping folder. I'm going to select hello world.py and then send this to the backend. We're going to get a bad request. I'm going to assume it's the way the file has been attached. So we will reset the file. Click to confirm. Instead of just sending a file, we will send multiform. Here we're going to specify the name. So what name are we looking for? Scraper contents. Let's place this here from the drop down here. We will select that we want a file again. I will select hello world. Let's try to send this and now we get an internal server error and this error here is actually completely fine. It's basically saying that the function here didn't return a response and we didn't say that it should. What we're re really looking for is this print statement and 
there it is. There is the contents of our Python file that we're trying to upload. Let's go ahead, take these contents. We'll place them on the scraper contents. Let's uncomment this. We will remove print and we're going to return something like imported and then scraper name. So scraper name looks good to me. Let's restart the scrape API. Come back to Insomnia. We will send this again. We'll get another internal server error. And the error this time is, is that write argument must be string, not bytes. If we scroll up just slightly, we will see that the string that we're getting here is prefixed by B, which means the contents over here are in binary format. It's not a big problem. All it means is that we just have to decode it. So let's go ahead and say decode to UTF-8, a well understood standard. Again, restart the scrape API come back over here, we're going to send, looks like we have imported my test. My test is now present in our scraping directory. So this is just for testing. When we package up the scrape API, it is going to be inside the venv, which is what you want. Let's come back and try to scrape my test. So slash scrape slash my test. And there we can see an array of hello world and hello world printed over here. Let's stop the API. Let's remove my test from here. We're going to clear the console. We're going to deactivate. We will remove the venv and we're going to recreate it and test the scrape API afresh. So delete the venv, create the venv, start up the venv. We will install build tool. We will then use Python M so module build and build the scraping API library. Looks like the build didn't go too well and it copied a bunch of stuff and I think that's because, yeah, I didn't add wheel. So I'm not creating a wheel, I'm creating eggs, which is not what we want. So let's move all of this to trash. Uh, let's rerun this with a wheel. It looks good to me. Let's pip install scraping API dist and then the wheel inside of here. We'll launch scrape dash API. We will then go down here to venv and we will watch over lib scrolling down towards scraping somewhere over here. There we go. So at the moment we have a three. Let's come back to insomnia again, repost our scraper. Looks like that has been added successfully. There is my test. If we come back over here again, we're capable of triggering my test. And there we go. So hello world gets printed. And this is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you can see the plugin architecture in play. Whatever application you have built, it can be extended by building these little plugins and then inserting them into your application while the application is already installed or is actually running as in the case of the web API. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section, but better yet, come join my Discord server. If you are enjoying my content, come support me on my Patreon. I will greatly appreciate it. And a big, big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters that are already choosing to support me. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.